My dear sisters and brothers, we just finished our orientation. We call it the Live In, a Search In seminar for those young men who are interested to enter the religious life through the SVB. Around 20 of them uh, have applied and later on we will find out how many will be accepted and eventually how many will turn up and become part of our seminary formation. And on our part, we're very happy to see people who are interested in such life. And at the same time, it is also a way of the SVD, especially our community here in Christ the King through the Office of the Vocation Director, that even in the midst of pandemic, now we are still concerned with the um, recruitment of those who are, um, as I said, interested or yung tinatawag natin na may, may calling mula sa Panginoon. And our readings for today is but fitting. Kanina nga nung nag-uusap kami ni Father Don John, I sabi niya, oh, tamang-tama pala yung readings for today, yung gospel for today, and even Father Ben, ganun din ang kanyang sentimento. Because our gospel, or the readings for today are about people who are called by God and were sent to become messengers, to become missionaries, to become evangelizers, so that people will be drawn towards God, and so God can work his plan of salvation. O parang tayo, we are called by God to be here. O si Prophet Amos or Amos in the first reading was called by God. And in his argument with Amaziah, kasi Amaziah was trying to turn him away, pinapaalis siya ni Amaziah. O sabi ni Amaziah, doon ka na sa ibang mag, 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 manghula, prophesy. I'm, I'm using the Tagalog term that, I, that we use in the uh, anticipated mass. You, you go to other places. You earn your living there, thinking that a prophet was earning something for his endeavor. At ano sabi ni Amos, sabi, teka muna, I have my life. Though, hindi siguro niyo masasabi na mayaman siya, siguro yung trabaho niya ay sapat no, to have a decent life. He said, I'm a shepherd. I'm a dresser of sycamore. But God called me. He was prepared by God to become his mouthpiece, to become his messenger, to become his prophet. Paul in the second reading was also reiterating the mission that was entrusted to them, encouraging people, inviting people to believe in God and asking God that may God draw them closer to him so that they may have the life that he has promise and when it comes to the gospel for today well we are here we listen to the readings about jesus calling the 12 summoned the 12 and began to send them and through this dito natin makikita yung instructions ng ating panginoon on how to do it well there are times kasi na uh, ang term namin dyan eh, nagka frank sinatra ka pagdating sa mission you do it your way no? but Jesus was telling us that no since you have a, a mandate, you have a mission you have a calling na yung ating mga documents nga in Vatican II yung uh, ating Lumen Gentium ito yung mga documents ano, uh, agentes, we're talking about the church as missionary Individuals are called not to share and to spread the good news. Even in mga later documents ng church, yung Redemptoris Missio, ni Pope John Paul II. He's talking about the mission of the church. And even yung, late, late, uh, yung later encyclical na Evangelii Gaudium was talking about the evangelization, our role in evangelizing people. But of course, it is rooted in the scriptures. It is rooted here in the event that happened 
with the twelve when they were called by Jesus and began to send them. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? Kaya ang sabi ko, we do it in Jesus' way. Yung una, sabi ni Jesus, huwag kayong pumunta mag-isa. You go there two by two. Very practical. Pagdating sa mission, in their situation especially, wherein to travel was very, very dangerous. To be alone was very dangerous. Madaling ma-hold up, madaling manakawan, madaling magawa ng uh, kasamaan. Remember the journey of, ano, doon sa Good Samaritan, no? That a man fell victim to a robber. Ay, yun ang yayari na noon. Yun ang yayari ngayon. And of course, yung dalwa, may mga kasabihan tayo na two heads are better than one. Four hands are better than two hands. And at the same time, sabi ko, double the fun. Alam niyo, pag may kasama ka sa mission, ay iba ang saya. Because you share your joys, but also at the same time, you have somebody to share your struggles. Most of the time, you share your struggles. But also, they were sent to become witnesses. And taking the cue from the Old Testament in the uh, book of Moses, in Deuteronomy, Jesus somehow gave uh, importance to what people have already established as credible. Sabi doon sa book of Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15, one witness is not enough to convict anyone of crime or offense they may have committed, but also a matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. O, dalawa-dalawa kayong magpapatunay. Dalawa-dalawa kayo na magpapatotoo. So that what other was saying, no, will be attested by the companion or the others. O, Jesus way yan. And it was meant to be a community endeavor. The mission of the church is always a community endeavor. It involves people ordained and not ordained, the clerics, the clergy, the religious, and the lay alike. Sama-sama tayo sa pagganap ng binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. And I believe that no, it's always been that way, that the participation of all is always encouraged. And even the ministries na binibigay sa atin ng simbahan, may gaganap nito, may gaganap nito, that we are sent as a community. Ang pangalwa ay Jesus was reminding them of the simplicity of life and at the same time, our dependence in God's provision. It's very wise for Jesus to remind His disciples and most likely Jesus was also reminding you, especially me, or us to see our lives if it still fits on that life that Jesus has instructed us to have. Now here, he mentioned there that you, know, you take only the essentials. Do not be tempted by the material goods that will come into your way. At alam nyo, Ah, may mga pagkakataon na sabi sa Ray Lord oh, nga naman. Oh, minsan nalilibang, ano? Nakakali ang tago nalilibang, nakakalibang kasi ang mga tao napakababait. Kayo, you're very generous especially to us, to those who were doing mission. Alam niyo when I was in the mission, meron ako isang parishioner si Mrs. Wong. At pagkakatapos ng misa, laging lumalapit sa akin si Mrs. Wong. At nagpapasalamat. Thank you, Father, because of the missionaries. Dahil kayo ay ipinadala ng Diyos to be with us. And nowadays, uh, it's the presence that they appreciate most. In the past, maybe not only the presence, but also what missionaries were bringing. In the early 50s, 60s, 70s, alam niya ang Hong Kong ay hindi pa naman ganun kaunlad. There were stories 
of missionaries from America, from Europe, that many people will fall in line for the ayuda. Mantika, noodles, harina, and many other things. Na kung titingnan natin, ah, sumapit din pala sila sa ganoong uri ng buhay. But now it's not the oil and the noodles anymore, but the Word of God. At napansin namin na maraming mga missionaries ay nanggagaling sa may tutoring natin na mahirap na bansa. Many missionaries now are from uh, Asia. But then people recognizes this Mrs. Wong. Kaya lagi niya kung dinadala ng candy. Yung candy maalat. May ganong candy. Yung parang, sabi ko parang lasang isda yata itong candy nito. No, but eventually, siyempre, acquired taste. O, oh, hinahanap-hanap ko. Minsan mga ganong, mga ganong kasimple na may kakatok na lang sa office. May dala-dalang isang thermos ng soup. O, yung soup na nilaga ng tatlong oras para kumatas yung mga gulay na inilagay doon at mga, may mga herbal pa yata na isinasama for us to be healthy. And I said many other things. But Jesus warned them and reminded them And at the same time, it is recognizing the accompaniment that God is doing every time He sends His mission. At doon nga tayo tutungo sa pangatlo, that when God sent His missionaries, He accompanies Him by giving them authority and power to heal, to drive out unclean spirits. Ito yung mga nakita nila kay Jesus Christ eh. Especially in the beginning of the Gospel according to St. Mark. That Jesus was indeed a miracle worker in the previous Gospels that we have. The coming of the storm, the healing of the sick. And now they're bringing the, that authority, that power with them. But of course, we acknowledge that we are just channels of this power. But nonetheless, it is a beautiful reminder that God is always with us, that God is accompanying us in our missionary endeavors. But also, yun na nga, may mga pagkakataon that those who are sharing Jesus with others will be frustrated because of the responses of people. Kanya-kanyang context, kanya-kanyang generation. Though the message remains the same, the way we deliver the message, the way we use what is available right now is essential. And the context and the situation of the people differs generation after generation. Ano ba ang mark ng generation natin ngayon? Diba? Ano ba ang mga turn on and turn offs nila pagdating sa pagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos? Will this method be still effective? Or pupunta tayo halimbawa sa social media because many people are now in tune with the social media. Magbabahay-bahay ka ba? Will you do a program? Diba? Will you involve yourself in the social work? Will you remain only in the spiritual work? Ang Bible Uh, proclamation ba of the word of God is only through preaching or meron pang ibang methods gaya ng ginagawa ng marami ngayon and of course yung sitwasyon natin ngayon and how people see God how people perceive salvation kaano ba ang pagpapahalaga ng mga tao pagdating sa kaligtasan no. Amos was rejected at anong sabi ng Panginoon? Well, kung magkaganon man, just shake the dust off your feet. You move on. Reminding us that it is the mission of God. In our sincerity, if people reject us, and then they are rejecting the message. And of course, the God who asks us to share His message to others. <laughs> sabi ko nga, mabuti pa si... Uh, Taylor Swift. 
she knows how to shake it off. <laughs> Di ba? Ano sabi dun sa kanta? Oh. The players gonna play, play, play. And the haters gonna hate, hate, hate. Oh. Baby, I'm just gonna shake, shake, shake. Shake it off. Woohoo. <laughs> and Jesus is telling them that do not worry. If we are doing this together, and then even rejections will be learning experiences for all of us. Sabi nga nung aming founder si Arnold Johnson when he was asked, paano naman kung tayo if we fail on our mission? Sabi niya, just strike your breast and tell yourself that you're not worthy of this kind of grace. But of course, to continue and move on and go from one place to another. So yun, no, in our participation in the mission of Christ, we follow His instructions. We take the Gospels as handbook, as manuals that tells us, especially the Gospel of today, tells us that, well, He will be sent to become witnesses as a community, two by two. Later on, sabi mga, not only two by two, but as a church that we are reminded of the dependence of our trust in the ways of God by living the life that He has instructed us to have. And also that by our mission, God is always with us, that we will become channels of God. And this authority, this power will be on us or upon us because of Jesus. And we treat our work, our missionary endeavors, as God's endeavor, as God's mission, reminding us that in whatever we do, in His name, He will accompany us. Amen.